Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now, it's time for our next hot topic. We're talking about protecting our children on International Childhood Cancer Day. Today is the 15th of February, and it's known as the Day for Raising Awareness for International Childhood Cancer um, for our kids. And we're just talking about how to protect them. Now, joining us to have this conversation is Dr. Kiki O'Meli. She is a medical practitioner hi good hi, morning good morning Lovely to have you <laughs> good to have you Thanks Thanks to so we know we know you wear many hats you're an actor you're also a doctor mm -hmm. um how is that first you know having to do <laughs> this whole doctor thing and raising awareness for um for this this childhood cancer okay so i'm a trained medical doctor uh somewhere along the line i started acting it is my passion and it's what i do and it's what pays my bills and puts food on the table oh. however um, I mean, my training is still very much there and I'm passionate about getting the word out. So I like to use my platform as an actor to basically spread the word about the healthy living. So, yeah, that's how those two things come together. That's amazing. Well, it's good that, you know, you're using your platform to, to do all of these things because, I mean, it's, it's just helping people, helping humanity, exactly. really. Exactly. Um, so let's talk about um, International Childhood Cancer Day. What is this day about? Um, I know most times for almost everything, you have a day. You have mm -hmm. International Women's Day. You have a day for everything. You have, you have the day for the girl, girl child, child, the for boy, the boy child. child. <laughs> you know, almost everything. Boy child is not the reigning thing. It's always girls, girls, girls. Child. Not really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that the, the females just make a lot more noise about our mm -hmm. days. Yeah, yeah, well. Because it's a day for, yeah, we make a lot more noise about Mother's Day because mm -hmm. there's Father's Day as well, but we make a lot more noise. I think about guys that. don't really care yeah, about Yeah, they don't really days. care. Yeah, yeah. Like, make all the so noise. cool. Calm down. I'm in the mid I'm here. Yeah. Okay. But yes, like I was asking, yes. so what is this day for exactly? Yeah, because we, we have Cancer Awareness Month. We have Survival mm -hmm. Cancer Day. Mm -hmm. And now we still have International can Childhood Cancer yeah, Day. So. Yeah. Um, so childhood cancer is something that needs a lot of awareness because most children that come down with cancer can't even speak. You have um, toddlers, mm. sometimes even babies. Some people, some babies are born with cancer. So there has to be a day, you know, for that awareness. People that have children, parents, need to be aware of the things that they need to look out for to get an early diagnosis. Because for childhood cancer, the earlier a cancer is diagnosed, the better the chances of survival, especially in developed countries. There's about an 80% survival rate for childhood cancers but most of this would depend on an early diagnosis so these days the day just sets aside you know basically to create a lot of awareness about childhood cancer yeah but creating awareness is one thing if you, even if you find out that the child is has cancer what do you do in nigeria because you talk about developed countries nigeria is not one of them well so How do you even <laughs> find out that so i child said has so i said there's an 80 percent survival rate in developed countries in developing countries like nigeria it's about 20 percent for several reasons wow, that's quite low late diagnosis is one of the reasons so when you say even if you find out what do you do if you know what your problem is then you can take steps towards solving it but unfortunately, in a country such as Nigeria, one of the problems may be funds, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why foundations such as the one I'm representing today, Akanimo Cancer Foundation, that's why they exist. To kind of help people who are unable to, you know, pay for their cancer treatment. And um, sometimes you also encourage people that even if you don't have a foundation, or you're not going to work with the foundation. Sometimes you can just go to a hospital around your area if you want to help, you know, just mm. help one or two people sort out Volunteer. their bills. Volunteer. Oh, it goes a long way. Yeah. yeah, but uh, how do we, do we even access the facilities that will help us find out if our children are with cancer? Okay, so um, one of the things I'm here to talk about today are the things that, you know, the signs, some of the early warning mm -hmm. signs that you could see that okay. could maybe point you in that direction that this might be something to check out. Okay, yeah. Yeah. even before um, you I was you about to, to even ask that. Something. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things would be an unexplained fever lasting maybe two weeks or more. You know, usually if someone had like malaria or some kind of infection, or, you know, yeah, then the fever would be explained. But if a child has a fever for no reason that you can you can see and is lasting for a long time, it's something you might want to check out. Also things like weight loss, um, swelling in any part of the body, arms, legs, abdomen, mm. face, you know, jawline. And, you know, there was previously no trauma because sometimes if a child should be playing and, you know, he hits one part of the body then it swells you know but yes. if there was nothing like that and there's just a swelling that is unexplained it might be something to check out also for some children they have like a white spot in the eye depending on the kind of cancer 
So if you notice, uh, you know, white spots in the child's eye that was previously not there, maybe something to check out as well. Um, a squint that wasn't there before, headaches that might come with vomiting, seizures, um, easy bruising. You know, there, there are so many things that could point to childhood cancer. This is not to say, however, that if you see all these signs, this is not to say that it means it's cancer. It's just that, you know, it's worth, it could be cancer. worth mm -hmm. checking out, yeah. And as to what to do, you go to the hospital. If you can't afford a private hospital, you have the teaching hospitals or the general hospitals that um, offer services as well. Yeah, but because okay. it's not every hospital that offers these services. Uh, maybe you are in the village, for instance, and you, you've seen these signs. And accessing this is quite um, uh, difficult. This is so, true. This yeah. is true. This is why we have things like referrals. So if you go to, say, um, a health center and they are unable to handle it, then they refer you to a facility that is equipped to handle these things. But like I keep saying, in a developing country such as this one, many times people are hampered by funds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is where well-meaning individuals <laughs> like you and I can actually um, help. Okay, right. so let's talk about the role of technology. How how can technology help with all of these things to, you know, just for the advancement of prognosis? Because most times the reason why people die, that's not just even children now, the reason why people die from cancer is because they never really detect it early enough. So what does technology do to actually Village help? People. <laughs> they, oh, well, and they, and they say that they village, village people, people right? and all these signs are showing that they're yes. village people yes. you know? when you were asking what technology can do what occurred to me is right now we're on TV mm -hmm. and you know we're it's technology and we're mm -hmm. talking and people can actually hear Raising awareness. yeah yeah there's somebody somewhere thinking to themselves oh I might have noticed that in my child maybe I need to check this out so even just raising awareness on TV on the radio you know just in the media generally that's one of the things that technology can do mm -hmm. you know um, to Towards the diagnosis of childhood cancer but also in hospitals I mean you have um, all the radiotherapy mm -hmm. and the chemotherapy that's all that's all technology really mm -hmm. so yeah so since it it's international um, childhood cancer awareness day um, do we have like partnerships with international you know bodies people who we just partner with for instance I know there's like cancer research UK um, so do they partner with like um, developing countries such as Nigeria to make sure that we're raising more awareness and ensuring that children are not dying of cancer? Well, truth be told, um, many of the foundations that exist for cancer awareness in Nigeria, many of them are, should I say, um, like individual Mm -hmm. Many of them are, you know, formed because of like personal reasons. Yeah. For example, the Akanimo Cancer Foundation was established because of a young boy, Akanimo, who, I mean, very bright young boy that previously had no issues. His father is actually a doctor, mm -hmm. um, a senior colleague of mine. Uh, at the time I was doing my house job in University College Hospital, Ibadan. And after his 10th birthday, he just, you know, complained mm -hmm. of constipation and abdominal discomfort. And then, you know, he went for an ultrasound scan and boom, wow. cancer. Yeah, and it was a rare kind of cancer. He was immediately flown to the United States. He fought for two years. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, he passed. You know, he only lived two years because he was in the he was in the U.S. If he had been in Nigeria, probably wouldn't have lasted yeah. that long. Yeah. So his parents established this foundation just to kind of get the word out there. What's the point I'm making with all this is that most of the time these foundations are actually personal. Mm. Um, something like Cancer Research UK. I don't know how interested they would be, you mm. know, in partnering with. So it would be if anything like that were to happen, it would be these foundations reaching out to them to, them, to see how there could be collaboration. Now, know. how would you describe the infrastructure, the available infrastructure in Nigeria to fight this? I I understand the federal government is even thinking about adding cancer treatment to the NHS or the, yeah, 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 yeah. thing. So, HMO. but for now. How would you describe the infrastructure? Do we have enough? What needs to be done? Do we have enough? We definitely don't. We definitely don't. In terms of even radiotherapy machines in the entire Nigeria, I don't think we have more than three or five. So we definitely don't. It's uh, cancer is not something that you really want to have in a country such as this one, which is why we are talking about early diagnosis. Because like I keep saying, the earlier you diagnose it, then the better this can be handled. 
yeah, in terms of infrastructure, no, we are really not equipped. We need to do so much more. But who should be at the vanguard? Is government, it the private sector or government? The government, it's government, because because cancer is such an expensive disease. It's, it's, not, it's not something I feel like private sectors can. Well, maybe except for um, you know, maybe corporate bodies that can actually afford it. Maybe like the banks, maybe as some form of CSR. But I, I definitely do think it's something the government needs to look into because. Cancer is so much more common now than it ever used to be. Yeah. Maybe because of our diets, maybe because of the things we're consuming. You know, who really Even knows? The air we as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Who really knows? And unfortunately, with childhood cancer, unlike adult cancers, where you would usually have, you know, a reason why it exists, mm. maybe family history or yeah. maybe consumption or whatever. With childhood cancer, there's no clear evidence of cause. Mm. Yeah, many children are just born with cancer for whatever reason. You can't really put your finger on why this child has cancer. Mm. But but unfortunately, okay. for childhood cancers, you only have about 2% that you could claim that maybe have some kind of parental or hereditary. hereditary. Yeah, in about 95 to 98% of cases, there's no clear yeah, reason why it happens. Wow. Okay, so what what um, steps can the government take? Because now we're saying government has a lot, has a, a big role to play in all of this. So what steps can the government take to ensure that, you know, the facilities, the infrastructure that we need to be able to fight this disease out for children and i mean everyone at large because every life matters mm -hmm. so what can the government start to do to ensure that we can you know just the necessary steps yeah so i think in terms of allocation because many times you see a budget how much of the budget is allocated to health okay yeah i don't know about you but yes. i don't see anything impressive in that area so i think the teaching hospitals are available to the masses because not a lot of people can afford Private, private health care. Yeah. So for the teaching hospitals available to the masses, I think they need to be equipped to radiotherapy machines, you know, and, and things that people with cancer actually need for like a good diagnosis and treatment. I personally was never impressed, you know, while I practiced medicine, I was personally never impressed with the things that we put in place for the, the handling of cancer. Mm -hmm. Also, whenever the government takes on a cause, you know, people tend to hear about it because they go as far as to the grassroots level, you know, just to try to get the word out there. So if they take on HIV, for instance, they go out of their way, all the radio jingles, mm -hmm, you know, they, they mm -hmm. put it in a language that people can understand. But these things are expensive to do. Yeah. So I think first things first, you know, is awareness the reason why many people don't survive cancer is late diagnosis mm -hmm. if you don't know what to look out for and you're just at home until it becomes so bad and then you get to the hospital when it's late there's not a lot that can be done so i think in terms of awareness getting the word out there and then also just allocating the funds for mm -hmm. um treatment so you talked about diagnosis how often should you have like i know people say go check your yourself at least once a year but when you think of the cost, right, you know, healthcare is quite expensive here in Nigeria mm -hmm. compared to other countries where it's almost free. So how do you even start to look for these signs, you know, for yourself? Because I know it's um, for, for kids that we're talking about, but even for yourself, how do you start to look at for these signs and, you know, quickly go to the hospital to ensure um, early de detection? detection? Okay, so for, for adults or well, for women, for things like breast cancer, there's a breast self-examination that you can do. I mean, pretty yeah. much, yeah, you can do that by yourself. And if you see anything on toward, then, you know, you know what to do. Um, also, for things like cervical cancer, the pap smear is quite expensive. But you don't have to do a pap smear if you just want to find out if there's something wrong. There's something called, um, um, you know, a test you can do with Lugol's iodine, mm -hmm. where they just kind of swab the cervix. And if they see anything on toward, then they want to take, like, um, you know, further mm -hmm. investigations Investigation. and all that. So these are just a few of the things. And then, like I said, you know, the same way I'm saying, you know, watch your child closely. Also watch yourself closely. Some of these signs, you know, cancer signs also um, exist in adults. All the unexplained fever and weight mm -hmm. loss and all that. So I know that, you know, preventive medicine can be expensive yeah. because having to go to the hospital on a yearly basis to perform all these tests, I know it's expensive. But I mean, just as far as you can or as much as you can, just do what you can. You know, when, when we talk about the government uh, making sure that these facilities are available, what would you say about the manpower that can handle this? Does it need... <laughs> Specialized manpower. Ah, this is this is another topic entirely <laughs> because um, even the doctors all seem to have Le they're leaving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a different topic entirely. You know, it's unfortunate, but I don't think that this country, in particular, actually provides professionals with incentives to stay. 
Yeah. It's unfortunate. But in terms of specialized manpower, I think that um, many of these things, I think people can be trained, you know, to be able to use these machines but then for the doctors who have to you know provide the diagnosis and recommend the treatment and all that i don't know they seem to be living in droves so this, this we still have you so <laughs> <laughs> whether you well, practice or not you're, sure, you're sharing you. me you're sharing me with the screen mm -hmm. so. yeah well, we still have you well i will run to you you will say okay yeah you're because almost. if you were on a plane and someone gets a heart attack well, you're this you're is true. Doctor, 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 yeah, you so you all volunteer. it will always kick in and yeah. all that okay so what would you say about the success story so far when you talk about awareness of this uh, childhood cancer? Do, do people really know about it or what needs to be done? Well, I, I wouldn't say that a lot of people know. The educated people probably do. But um, many times when we do awareness like this, we also want it to get to the graduate level yeah. because cancer, you know, is across board. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know um, educational background. It doesn't know social background and all that. So do people really know about it? I think that a lot of work just needs to be done in terms of awareness. And I'm really hoping that as a result of my being here today, you know, somebody somewhere will say, oh, you know, I think I noticed this or that to my child, mm -hmm. you know, and do mm -hmm. what they need to do. So there's a lot more that needs to be done. And even now that I've spoken to, to you guys, um, I'm sure you guys can also help mm, to get yeah, the word out well, there. Yeah, even if, it's, even if it's now. not on TV, you know, just, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. You okay. know, just spread the word to other people. But let's talk about the role of education. Now, do you think this is something that should even be done in schools like raising that awareness in schools oh, yes. like maybe even into the curriculum or something and they should just learn about it since we're seeing that it's prevalent in you know our world today so is this something that when we go to schools you know your teachers your for instance there's biology right in yeah. schools so are there teachers that are going to be teaching about these things you know finding out for yourself if in case there's anything you can notice easily for you to be able to go to the hospital yeah i mean when we went to school <laughs> there was no such thing, probably yeah. because the prevalence of cancer at that time, you know, it wasn't as bad as it is now. Yeah. But curriculums can be adjusted. Is curricula? What is the plural? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they can be revised. Yeah. You, you understand. So I do think it's necessary for things like that to be taught in schools because there's nothing like too much education. Mm -hmm. And that's even for the educated people. I keep talking about the people that don't go to school because they have cancer as well. Yeah. So we need to just find a way to keep getting the word out there. Yeah, we would we'd like to thank like the Academy of Foundation and every other foundation that is mm -hmm. doing it's this because uh, most times, not even most times, they do it out of passion. They do it out of a story that like yeah, you, you told story. this one and all that. So we'd like to encourage them. So, but we are always interested in how, what bit we can contribute, not just seeing it here for one day and all that. So what does a a foundation, for instance, like the one you belong to, do that you think media houses and other people who have the privilege to, to listen to this, to see this happen, uh, what can we do to make sure that uh, the evangelism, I'd like to put mm -hmm. it, goes further than what you do? Okay. So some of the things that the foundation does, apart from creating awareness like this, is to actually help people with their bills. You know how I keep talking about funds being, you know, a major barrier to treatment and early diagnosis. So this foundation at the moment is sponsoring about five children mm. who, yeah, are down with cancer and you know, paying all the bills and all that and hoping to do more. However, <laughs> foundations also need funds, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we keep talking about well-meaning individuals mm. either helping the foundation or even just on your own. Yes, yeah. just go to, I, I promise you, if you walk into any hospital, there are people that need help. They can't pay their bills sure. and you can be of help in some way. All okay. right. Thank you so much. This is where we have to wrap it up today. Thank and you. I hope, like, I mean, someone somewhere have heard all of this and they're doing their bit. And we hope that well many Nigerians will come out and start to support. So financially and even also volunteering as well. Yeah. We want to say I'd thank like you. to add, thank you so okay. much. I just wanted to say how to reach out to the foundation. Okay. If yeah, so on Instagram and Facebook, it's Akanimo Cancer Foundation. That's A K A N I M O C A N C R F O U N. Okay. D A T I O N. Okay. <laughs> I that right. Yeah. Akanimo okay. Cancer Foundation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So when you get there, you'll get the help that you need mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, all these foundations, not just Academy Foundation, will get the funding that they uh, need to get uh, to do what they are doing. And if you are having the wherewithal, please 
You can also, like she said, walk into a hospital, do, do your bid, or f get a foundation yourself so that people can access whatever yeah. you are able to give. All right. This is what we have to wrap it up on the breakfast today. We'll be speaking to Dr. Kiki Omeli, who's a medical practitioner. We've just been talking about protecting our children on the International Childhood Cancer Day, which is today, the 15th of February. Anyways, we'll see you again tomorrow. This is where we end the show today. Mm. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be Friday. Friday frenzy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. My name is Brumet Paulson. And I am Nyamguru Agaji. See you tomorrow. Bye.